The Steps Hip Spiker Care DVD is made for parents and carers of children in Hip Spiker Cas. They are a series of mini videos which cover aspects of looking after a child in a cast. The videos are examples of how real families coped with everyday tasks of looking after a child in a hip spiker. They are not meant to be fully comprehensive and cannot tell you everything you will need to know about hip spiker care, but hopefully they will reassure you that solutions can be found to many practical problems. Remember that it is best to contact your healthcare professional if you have a problem you cannot solve. Parents, carers and healthcare professionals have reviewed these videos. The biggest worry for me initially was the actual operation and how that would be and, you know, staying in hospital and just obviously seeing your child in pain and going through that whole thing was, was a huge worry. Um, and that I was reassured by people, you know, saying that the kids just cope they always cope better than better than you could imagine and I always think better than I think I would cope if it was me I think I would um, rant and rave a lot more before the operation we um, it was, that was another of my worries was how we prepared her for the for the for the initial operation because um, we'd known about it for probably three months before we knew it was happening and on which date and we I didn't really know how soon to tell her and what to tell her and how to tell her. Um, but we decided, Robbie and I, to, um, to leave it quite late so that she didn't have too much time to, to, to dwell on it and worry about it. Um, and I think it was probably about two weeks beforehand we sort of sat her down and we had a few books from the library, Topsy and Tim Go to Hospital and um, The Little Princess book about going to hospital and we sort of just read them first without any sort of inferences or hints or anything and then sort of the next time we read them we sort of just started to introduce the topic of her going to hospital to have an operation um, and she already knew I mean she's been going in and out of hospital for x-rays since she was tiny so she she knows that she has got something wrong with her hip and she just sort of went a bit quiet and sort of took it all in. And then the next time she would ask a few more questions and a few more questions and we, we just explained it all as, as honestly as we could um, and made it clear if she had any questions t to ask us. And, we, yeah, we looked at a lot of books about going to hospital and I think it, I think it worked well, actually, because she, she didn't panic or worry too much once we got there. She... Um, she just sort of accepted and, and even when we were in hospital before the operation you know we got to a certain point and she had to have the magic cream on her hand and she had to have some blood taken and she would sort of refer back to books sometimes you know that, oh that's the receptionist and that's the nurse is coming to to do this because she'd read about it in in the book so um, I think it did definitely help her a lot. I think as far as getting ready for going into hospital, um, you can get some really useful information from speaking to other mums about what they take and don't forget to take stuff for you because they're long nights and it's nice to have your own music player or some DVDs for yourself um, so that you know, you've got some entertainment to go to sleep to. Um, one thing that they you sort of forget about is you've got to look after yourself as much as your child so make sure you're taking some creature comforts for yourself like little snacks and some nice coffee and some nice tea which you can put in the parents room um, because you know you don't want to be surviving on sort of hospital canteen food and it isn't that they aren't open in the middle of the night for you to just pop down and have a snack when you finally your child falls asleep and you get some reprieve off the ward so that side of things. I, one of the other things that was suggested to us by the specialist nurse from the hospital that Bethan had her operation at was um, to come and visit the ward beforehand and that was really helpful because it wasn't such an intimidating place then for, for Bethan and for us we just had a nosy round so we were able to see the type of bed that um, my, my husband actually stayed with Bethany in hospital, but he um, was able to see where he'd be sleeping. And we were just able to ask the, the basic questions of, do we have to bring our own sheets and towels, or are they provided? And so we didn't have to pack lots of extra stuff. So, what was that? Bethan wanted to make her own list as well. 
is it? Things to um, take. Is that body? Um, is that gummy bag? Yeah. I can see toothbrush. Did you have to take a toothbrush? Yeah. And a hair bubble and clips. Yeah. And toothpaste and bubbles and books and CDs and my my pink headphones. Gosh, you had, so you had a big bag full of all these things, did you? One of the things we did with her the day before she went in was um, had a nice afternoon bandaging up all of her teddy bears and she absolutely loved it. Um, so we've got a couple of teddies who managed to get bandages. She was very upset that his leg wasn't him um, bandaged up so we had to have an arm as well as a leg. Um, and then I managed to get hold of some, some plaster of Paris and gave one of her dollies some plaster trousers and she was ever excited, ever so excited to see that one of her dollies had some plaster trousers. I mean you could do this just with um, paper mache or just bandaging up a dolly. Um. I, think this, I, th I think doing all this preparation beforehand really helped because um, you know she was able to sort of relate to somebody and, and when she went into hospital everybody commented that her dolly had plaster on it already and she was very proud that she was going to be getting some plaster trousers and when they came round and put a little bandage on her um, on her arm she, she knew what that was all about so it's it certainly helped to get get ready for being in hospital. This is Beth's scrapbook. It not only helped to prepare her, but it's a record for her of her time in plaster. I hope it's something she'll be able to look back on in the future. I think one of the things that you've got to realise, and even people watching this sort of video, which we've put together, is every surgeon is individual. And this is a type of surgery whereby little things will vary quite considerably from surgeon to surgeon. Some people will want um, maybe more frequent x-rays or they will have a policy that every child gets a CT scan after the operation. Um, whereas some surgeons will say, well actually we're quite happy with the time, positioning at the time of surgery and we don't think that's necessarily needed. So it's very difficult to sort of direct people to one site that's going to give an overall answer. I think the, the biggest thing that you can do is to ask your particular surgeon the questions, ask them what their policy is and get an idea beforehand, before the operation, what the follow-up's going to be like, how frequent you'd expect to be x-rayed, um, what to be worried about. And one of the biggest sources of information are the orthopaedic specialist nurses who work alongside all the teams of surgeons and most teams now will, especially within the children's hospital, will have such a person attached to them and they're fantastic. Remember, you are not alone. When you want information, advice and support, our helpline team are here to help you. No matter how big or small your concern, please email or telephone our helpline. Get instant access to information 24 hours a day via our website where you can download our advice leaflets. You can also visit our online chat forum which provides a fantastic resource of helpful tips and practical advice written by parents who are coping with a child affected by hip dysplasia.